Hey guys, welcome back to more First Descendant. I hope you guys are having a good one. I have been playing a lot of this game recently, uh, primarily just on my own free time. I just got done completing the main story and I'm ready to embark on hard mode and actually start to do more of the end game content uh, that this game offers. Although the main reason that I am actually making this video is I wanted to provide some tips that I feel like will be useful to people who are wanting to learn how to play this game and what are all the things are. So if you go to basically your menu, if you go to your access info, this right here is your friend. This literally will tell you how to get certain things and where to go to unlock certain things as well as get those things. Um, so for example, in terms of modules, these they list every module that you can get and if you are looking for a specific one, you can actually go into, say you wanna look for a specific module that is tethered towards general rounds. So if you go to general rounds, it brings up all the general rounds modules. The ones that are lit up are ones that I have unlocked before, but as you can see that there, there is some that I have not yet unlocked. So if you click on them, if you go and click on them, and I'm playing on PC, so if I press F, it brings up acquisition info for this weak point quick fire. If I do this, it will bring up all of the missions in all of the areas where these items will drop. And as you can see, most of them will say mission monster, which means this is just a generic drop in these areas based off of whatever monster you are killing on these quests or these general areas. So this one is basically available in the Kingston area. So if you are just farming in Kingston and doing these missions, you will likely get this module. Uh, and this can be applied to anything, uh, any type of weapon, any type of module. It makes it way easier and knowing where you need to go and where to farm certain missions in order to get certain items. Another thing, there is a currency, these shards. These are very important. These are what allow you to upgrade the modules to different tiers. As you can see, I've already done some upgrading and we are maxed out on weak point insight. These little dashes right here tell you the enhancement levels of these. And as you enhance them, their capacity increases. And so this one's actually maxed out. But yeah, and then in order to get more of these is you can get them by basically doing everything in the game, killing missions, however you want to do it. But one thing is, if you go to here and speak to Cillian, or Cillian, I don't know how to say his name. If you go to dismantle module and hold down the shift button, it will highlight all of the duplicate modules that you have. So you'll, these are modules that you've already collected before and you already have, and you have a, a duplicate of it. You can dismantle it and you'll give you more of those shards uh, that this is something that I've been doing for ones that I know I will not be using ever or I'm not really interested in and it will help you get shards faster another thing is to always be going to this lady right here to be able to research some of the easiest things to do this is where you go to be able to research everything in order to unlock uh, ultimate weapons and your descendants, as well as enhancement materials, everything that will be through here. If you go and do go to all, you have these basic ones right here, these phase exchangers, and then these precision phase ex exchangers. These are what are needed in order to transfer the levels of your weapon. Say you find a weapon and it's really good and you don't want to have to find a new one you can increase the level of that to a higher level weapon using a higher level weapon to transfer the level to it. And you use these phase exchanges to do all that. And then you have these adjustment controls that allows you to change the statistics of your weapons as similar to like a re-rolling of a weapon like in World of Warcraft or anything like that in many of these games. If you go to weapon readjustments, if you click on a weapon, you can lock certain options. If you like the options you have, you can lock one. But as you can see, I have 41 of these. It will take up one. But if I choose one, it takes up two because I want to keep that fire attack. So that's how you basically can min-max your weapons to get the best perks 
that you like for your build. Like I did it for this one and I was able to get a pretty decent one with firearm critical hit rate, firearm critical hit damage. And I thought that was pretty good for where I'm at right now. Basically, there's like a prestige system in this game with your weapons. If you go into here, you can see that th like this one, like if I go to setting three, this is clear. I don't have anything in here, but as you can see, there is a slot dedicated to Cerulean and then there's a slot dedicated to the Malachite or Malachite. But if I wanted to apply additional socket types, basically this will restart the weapon and re-roll it to level one. And when you do that, it you can apply, I can apply up to five more to, so if I click here and do this and I, and assign, I need a crystallization catalyst in order to do this. And it will basically reset the proficiency and everything back down to one and you're starting back over again. But it will become a stronger weapon because it will make the module capacity less than what you currently have. Because when you apply these slots, it cuts the cost of it in half so that you'll be able to apply more. And that's what I'm having to do because I can't ex basically, I cannot level up any of these modules any further because I'm maxed out. So I would have to apply more slots in order to cut them in half so that I can apply more upgrades. So that's how you can make current weapons stronger as you move on. And this also applies to your descendant as well. So it's the same thing. If you go in here, you go to assign module type. I already have four in here because this is what they usually come with stock but i need another catalyst apply another one and then basically it resets her level down to one and you ha basically are re doing the leveling process of the character again but you will be stronger so that's another thing i learned that is pretty it makes the grind crazy of course but it makes it so that there's more playability to certain descendants i say you're wanting to basically max out that's basically what this game is main focal point is, is trying to get as strong, strong as possible, get the highest numbers. One thing I want to mention is that if you're having trouble with a certain boss, especially if you're playing with other people, just take it on solo. Because if you look at the boss that you're wanting to fight, so like, for example, I know a lot of people have a hard time with Pyromaniac because he is a DPS check, really, because if you don't know, he is weak to basically skills, but he's really strong against guns. His weak point type though, if you do have a gun, is to use piercing ammo. Uh, the thing is, is that what I did is since he's a fire type and I was playing as Bunny as well, you see how he's strong resistance against light to electricity. Bunny's electricity. I'm like, crap, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But then I saw the fire resistance is recommended in order to basically survive his fire attacks. You need to have a 2100 fire resistance. I'm like, huh, that's not that bad. Like, so what I did is all I did was I went into my descendant module and I found, I just typed in heat antibody and they have different antibodies for all the different damage types. So heat antibody will basically add resistance to fire. And I just, I basically just enhanced this until I basically was able to get over that level. And I put this on and I was able to withstand basically everything he was doing without the fear of dying and using my machine gun and everything that I've upgraded up to this point. When I took him on, I was able to do it solo. When you play these bosses solo, the bosses scale down to you as being the only person in there so they are weaker they won't take as many hits they won't be as spongy they won't do as much damage they are a pain when you have four people because you are relying on the other people to know what to basically you be using as weapons as well as if they actually have fire resistance or if they actually have good defense stats so i just said you know what i'm just gonna do this myself and add what I felt would be necessary. All it took was just putting this, updating it, upgrading it, 
putting it on and I just went in there and I soloed it and it took me like five minutes it was not that bad and then there's a bunch of good little farming areas too as you if you are not yet past the main story one of the ones that i recommend especially if you are somewhat higher level if you get to white knight gulch the very opening area this one right here i'm pretty sure yes this one right here if you go to the shipment base right here and you do this mission called fortress outskirts it leads you into this area and this area is a mission that has four hacking points if you are able to, or if you have friends, or if you have a lot of AOE damage, you can, what I was doing as Bunny, since it was pretty easy, was I was able to spawn all four of, I was able to hack all four at the same time, and then just run around with the AOE. And because you were doing all four at the same time, it will be the waves of enemies assigned to those specific hacking points. And it will just be like, 40 enemies on the base at the time and then four waves of elite enemies that would be able to spawn at the same time so you'll it'll be doing a pretty decent job in terms of dropping uh, uh ultimate modules better weapons and getting a lot of those shards as well this i was here i did this like four or five times uh and i i thought that was a pretty good spot and i'm sure there's other better ones as well um but yeah i that's kind of what i've learned so far as a person who's just got done with the main story and i'm now ready to venture into hard mode i'm sure there's a lot more that i'm yet to learn as i continue to progress but yeah uh i i've kind of rambled on here i just wanted to make this quick little video to tell you guys that what i've been up to and what i thought about this game and but yeah that that's some of the quick little tips i've learned about this Hopefully this helps you guys if you guys are into this game or have been playing this and wanting to learn how to play this game um, and make it easier on yourself. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't really know how to do this. I'm kind of literally doing this on the spot. I didn't really make a like a script or anything of this. I, I'm just rambling on trying to get my point across. Hopefully it came out smooth. Uh, maybe I'll make it better with the power of editing. I don't know. But yeah, that is the go-to for what I've learned so far with this game. It's actually a pretty fun game. Um, and I'm enjoying it. So let me know down below what you guys have thought about First Descendant. If you've continued to play it since my first video. And uh, which player are you playing as? Who's your favorite Descendant? Who are you wanting to get? Who are you been trying to get? Um... What's your favorite weapon? Let me know down below. I'm very curious to see if you guys have been playing this game as well. And what you guys have thought about it so far. But yeah, that'll be it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm not sure what will be the next one. I'm kind of just playing this until a new game comes out that catches my eye. And yeah, so thanks again. See you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.